Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For the new people over here, I am Maria and I am a second year PhD student at the University of Birmingham. Today I will be taking you through the top 5 myths about a PhD. A quick introduction for those who don't know what a PhD is. A PhD is a postgraduate doctoral qualification which is awarded to students who complete an original thesis, offering a significant new contribution to a particular field or subject. PhD qualifications are normally available in a range of subjects and are normally the highest level of academic qualifications one could achieve. For example, my PhD is in the field of cancer immunology and immunotherapy, and one of the arms of my PhD project involves investigating the ability of novel drugs to stimulate the immune system to kill cancer. Basically, these drugs can sensitize the tumor cells and make them more visible or prone to distraction by the immune system. Now, that is just a brief summary of what I am doing, and there is a lot more to my PhD than that but I thought I would just mention it as an example for those who are interested. Now, there are a number of myths of what it's like to do a PhD, and I picked out a few of my favorites, which I think are quite common. Obviously, there's always more stories and more rumors about what it's like to do a PhD, but I won't be able to cover all of them in this video. So I will just focus on the five most common ones. So here goes my selection of top five myths about a PhD. Number one. PhD involves working long hours and you won't have time to do anything else. Now, this is not necessarily the case. This really depends on the project. The days off are definitely allowed. And also, adequate planning of your work gives you enough time to do some personal activities. So in my case, for example, I like to hang out with my friends and family and I also do karate. I've been doing karate for about 12 or 13 years now and I've continued that training throughout all of my studies and I'm still doing it now that I'm a PhD student. I think it's also really important to just switch off from your PhD work because otherwise it will just become very overwhelming and you will burn out pretty quickly. Also, working from home is allowed. So, for example, there are days where I don't need to set up any experiments and I don't need to, I don't need to do anything in the lab. So I can just spend some time at home either doing some reading or data analysis or catching up on writing. So, for example, I've been writing some parts of my thesis as I've been going along in my project. So, yeah, you definitely don't have to be in 24-7 fully committed to your PhD and nothing else in your life. I've also actually been asked a question once and this question kind of aligns with this myth but is also a little bit of an opposite and that is, is doing a PhD a 9 till 5 job? No, it is not. I'm not counting that as a separate myth because I don't think that's a very common one. And of course, it's fair enough that people think that because a lot of jobs out there are 9 till 5 jobs. But yes, it's not a very common perception of a PhD. As I said before, it all depends on your project and what you're planning to do with your day. If you have plans or commitments during certain times of the day or during particular days of the week, you can plan your work around all that. I always have time to spend with my family, with my friends, and I have time for the extracurricular activities. So it's all definitely manageable. Next stop, myth number two, and that is PhD is too hard, stressful and lonely. No, this is not true. Well, a PhD is obviously not easy, but it is not impossible. I would say that it can be a bit like a roller coaster at times because you know, sometimes your experiments won't work or your cells get infected and die, which messes up all of your future planned experiments. Equally, there are some stressful times as well, but it's not all stress and agony. I personally find it very rewarding when I set up an experiment and I get some really cool and exciting data from that. And that is fantastic and definitely worth the effort. So yes, it's hard, but not so hard that it's awful. As for the loneliness part, I personally don't ever feel lonely. I've been in research for quite some time now and I can't say that I've ever felt lonely really. I have a great and supportive team, I have a really good supervisor with whom I have regular contact and I know this is not the case for everyone as the work environment can vary a lot but saying that it's the same everywhere so for example if somebody has a bad experience during the PhD saying that that's what all PhDs are like is not right. It is not the same everywhere and not all PhDs are like that. 
Even if you're in a small team with no other PhD students, there will always be someone that you could talk to, whether that is a PhD student from another team or someone else who is more junior or senior than you are, with whom you can share your issues and experience. Moving on to myth number three, and that is PhD research must focus on something that has never been done before. That's not quite true. Your research project will be asking some novel questions, but these won't just be plucked out of thin air. The PhD research questions will be based on research that has previously been carried out in the field. So this gives you some point of reference and a sense of direction in which you should be going in. And by that, I mean looking at what others have done in the field generally and using that knowledge gained through reading and researching to drive your PhD project. One of my PhD work streams, for example, involves investigating a set of immunostimulatory compounds. The compounds I'm working with are new, but similar work has been done in the field with different formulations of compounds. So looking at previous research publications gives me some ideas of what I could look at in my project and what questions I could ask. Also, I have more senior and more experienced people on the team and my supervisor who can also point me in the right direction. And this brings me on to the next myth, which is you are expected to be independent straight away at the start of your PhD. No, you're not. I can actually relate to this one because when I was younger and I heard about PhDs, I was convinced that by the time you get to the PhD stage, you should be more independent and know everything. And that is most definitely not the case. Even if you have previous experience from working or doing a master's, and I've done both, you're always taught how to do everything first, so you can find your feet eventually. And once you've settled in and made a start, you will then begin to come up with your own research questions and ideas, and you can always consult with your teammates and or your supervisor. They can let you know whether you are on the right track and point you in the right direction. So it's all a learning process in which you gradually learn to be more independent. But you always have your supervisor who can help out, they can make suggestions for your project, so you won't be left completely on your own at any stage. And finally, myth number five, which is doing a PhD means that you specialize in a specific area. Again, not necessarily. Obviously, you gain experiences in particular fields with particular methodologies, but that does not mean that you cannot do anything else afterwards. I've actually been told that in a lot of cases, the subject of your PhD may be actually completely different to what you end up doing in the future. A PhD is essentially a training stage where you learn how to be more independent and carry out research and come up with your own ideas. But you also gain skills and experiences during your PhD, which are not necessarily directly related to the topic you're researching. By that, I mean the transferable skills. And these may benefit you if you decide to take up other opportunities outside of your PhD area. So for example, as I mentioned earlier, part of my PhD involves looking at immunostimulatory compounds that sensitize cancer cells for killing by the immune system. But doing a PhD on that topic does not necessarily mean that I will spend the rest of my life investigating immunostimulatory compounds for sensitizing cancer cells for killing by the immune system. I could choose and do something along the lines of cancer and or immunology and immunotherapy later on, but that does not necessarily have to be in exactly the same area as my PhD. And this diversion can actually help you build on the skills that you gained during your PhD, and it will also let you expand on your expertise. In fact, with my PhD, if I ever choose not to do lab work again, I can also do that. Going into something that does not involve any lab work is not exactly my career plan, because I love labs, I love the practical element of the work, but I won't go into too much detail about this in this video. So here are the top five myths about doing a PhD. There are quite a few more out there, but I felt like the ones I've covered in this video are the most popular ones. Like I said earlier, some time ago, I also used to have certain perceptions of what it's like to do a PhD, so I felt like sharing that with you today. I'd say that the main take-home message from this is that every PhD is unique. Some PhDs will require more physical work and presence than others. Some weeks during the PhD even will require more physical work and presence than others. Also, some students will have more contact with their supervisor and some will have less. And you will get more or less data than certain projects. 
It is very different and no PSG is the same. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. If you have any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.